Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. Today we're going to go through the Everything Money community. Here we are on the video request tab for this YouTube channel. And we're going to pick out one of these stocks that was requested. And we're going to do a blind analysis on them, run it through the Reliable Rudy process. Uh, if you didn't see the video I posted earlier today on Carvana, that was a viewer request. I'm open to doing more videos like that. Uh, if you have a particular company ticker that you want me to look at, uh, just put that in the comments and I will make sure I make a video on that. So uh, before I get into the video, I'll say I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. Okay, so we're going to scroll through this until we find one that, you know, maybe got a few upvotes. Uh, please do a video on Eagle Material. Um, I don't know. I've never heard of Eagle Material. Let's try and find something that multiple people have heard of. CRM. We could do CRM. Uh, Fox. I see T. Row. I see Meta. Uh, let's keep scrolling, and AOS, we have a couple of AOS, AO Smith, okay, so let's do it on AO Smith, uh, let's go return to the software, let's type in AOS, AOS, I can see the $60 stock, okay, so starting with some of the metrics, I can see it is profitable, uh, profit margins of 13.6%, current PE 18, five-year average of 24, net income 500 million, uh, gross margins 36%, price of sales, uh, for every $2.50 you invest, they can make $1. I can see their five-year average free cash flow is 420 million roughly, and their year-to-date free cash flow is up, so that's good. And now we do have a dividend company here. They pay a 2.2% dividend. Now, when looking at a dividend company, you have to look at the dividends paid and match that to their free cash flow because uh, there's multiple things you can do with free cash flow, and free cash flow is the bottom line profit that the company made. Now, to pay the dividend, that dividend is coming out of the free cash flow. So right here I can see their dividends paid, their free cash flow, five-year average even easily covers that dividend. So that is very good to see. Now I can see return on asset, return on equity, they invest their money very good, year to date 20% return on invest capital and five-year average of 17%. So okay, we have a potential company that we could uh, look at buying. We can see that the all-time high price is around $85 and it got to lows of $52. So um, going into the eight pillars, we can see, yeah, um, when I see companies like this, this is kind of in that Apple scenario when I said that when these two marks right here are X's, it's a matter of valuation. Um, but now I can see that their actual current PE, 18, is under that 22.5, so we are getting closer to getting full green check marks. Now I can see their long-term liabilities divided by their five-year average free cash flow, less than five. They can easily cover off their debts in about one and a half years going off their five-year average free cash flow. That's really good. And they're buying back shares at a 9.4% rate over the last five over the last five years. So really good to see that right there. Uh, I think just off this first look right here, this is going to take two parts of the video. So going into the income statement, we're going to look at this revenue. Now I want to see consistency on this revenue. I don't want to see any large spikes in revenue. I can't see the current year that we're in right here. Now remember that this is taking the last four quarters. So this is part of that 2021 year where it was kind of a fluke. So I'm actually going to go into a quarterly and see... Okay, so nothing too out of the ordinary. I can see these last two quarters really solid increases, but pretty consistent for the most part. And then also looking at the cost of goods sold, you know, it is higher, but looking at the gross profit, right in line. So I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. Now down to the net income, pretty consistent. They've been uh, bringing in a lot of net uh, net income year in, quarter in, and quarter out. And nothing too strange. Now, what I'd want to be worried about is if one quarter they were way up and then the next quarter they were way down and way down and then back up and then back down. But right here, it's pretty consistent uh, throughout the entire uh, 
entirety. Now I'm going to switch this to a, the last four quarters again, and I'm going to say, okay, so this was a actually a pretty solid spike in their net income. Is this going to be sustainable is what you're going to have to ask yourself. Um, but for the most part, pretty profitable company. Now to the shares outstanding, you know, these last four quarters, they bought back a good amount of shares and they've been consistently buying back shares the next thing I can see is the dividend growth so their dividend is actually growing so I'm gonna tie that off into inflation so inflation is a pretty big problem that we have uh, in the United States at the moment and there's been two ways that uh, people are able to fight inflation one of those ways is having a long-term fixed mortgage rate that is very low a low long-term fixed mortgage rate because that fixed rate is never going to change so if inflation is higher than your fixed rate inflation depreciates the value of the dollar but your fixed rate stays the same I may make a video on that later uh, going more in the depths on that but I hope you get that idea the other way is dividend growth so I can see last year they paid a one dollar dividend and this year they're paying a dollar and eight cents dividend so that year over year growth is eight percent so if that dividend growth is higher than inflation that is another way to counteract inflation so i like i like everything that i see with this company so far um yeah we're gonna go touch base on the long-term debts we could go and see if they've made a bunch of acquisitions okay so this is good so that would be one thing that's alarming I got a company that I like I want to make sure I go look at their acquisitions if they're making a bunch of acquisitions then that could be uh, offsetting how you actually look at the financials of the company they can use acquisitions to uh, make their numbers their financials look better than they actually are but in this case scenario you can see they haven't made an acquisition since 2014 and this was actually a sell off of a department or of a of a division and here was an acquisition that they made in 2013 but they haven't made any acquisitions this actually doesn't look half bad right here and i can see here's their repurchase of capital stock they've been repurchasing shares consistently and their debt is not uh, we're going to go look at the debt right now in the balance sheet actually so I want to see the current ratio. So here's their total assets of 3.43 billion. I want to see their total liabilities less than this. So scroll down total liability. Oh yeah, they have a current ratio of uh, over two. So that's that's damn impressive. That's very good. I'm not worried about uh, this company going under by any means. Uh, yeah, pretty impressive. So I can see why uh, a couple people were requesting that in the chat. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna cut this video off right here. The next video that I'm gonna make is actually gonna be a part two of this video where I go into macro trends and determined projections for this company. We're gonna run a discounted cash flow model, and then after we get that uh, valuation for the company, we're gonna take that valuation over to the chart and see what the chart looks like and see if we can match up where we want to buy this company. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video right here and. Uh, I will see you on the next one.